let's see, see a couple of people joining in. Bookmonger, Helicopter Fluffy, Coast 5620, Kraken Wise, thanks guys for joining in. As you guys can see from the stream title, we are doing a rebuild of my 10 at 70. Just to give you guys a baseline of what this sounds like, and then we'll do another typing test once we've swapped it out with the aluminum plates. So yeah, we'll see how things go. There we go. Just as a quick recap of how I feel about this board, um, number one, I can't exactly use it for my day-to-day -day use in the Southpaw format, because I thought I could get my QMK key map onto, onto this board, but no, what I usually do in this kind of format is this key functions as my toggle. So for example, I would press it, then these three become arrow keys for me. Press it again, it's back to being a right shift FN super and control that's my qmk key map for 60 percent but i can't do that using the opens lab firmware so i'm like oh crap can't use this as comfortably as i'm used to number two um i don't like the sound of this board it's a little too muted to me the typing feel i'm actually okay with it it feels good to type on but i'm not impressed by it if, if you know what i mean um we were sent pc plates in fact all the streamers were sent pc plates but through some persistent asking on the ClickClack server, we were able to get ClickClack to upload the plate files. So this is aluminum 6061, I believe. I didn't exactly try and go super expensive and all that. I will not be using plate foam, simply because the plate foam contributes most to that muted sound, which I don't like. So I'll just build it like this, you know, plate with no plate foam. So that we know that it's not because I changed switches or keycaps. I'm actually using Gateron KS9s, the same build as that. And I'll also be using a, a another set of nice PBT keycaps. See, Luminous Peak says, Keyboard seem to think this is a very muted board due to lack of space inside. Hopefully won't be pinging. I hope so as well. But like I said, we don't we don't really know at this point. We don't really know at this point. So yeah. Let's get started. See, first time chat from Excalibur. Hello, I came from YouTube. Hi, thanks for joining in. But I may actually, since we are just trying to test how it sounds, I may just stick with this one. We'll see. We'll see how I feel about that ribbon cable. There we go. Just a daughter board right there. Maria, thanks for joining in. You can see I'm building. Oh yeah, um, shout out to Maria. Maria was actually okay. So when Clackies uh, uploaded the plate file, there were some issues with the plate file that my plate cutter couldn't get around. But they let me know what what the issues were. So I brought them up to Maria here, and Maria apparently has some CAD skills. So Maria was able to take care of fixing up the plate file for me so me having this is has a lot to do with maria as well so thank you maria 
and we are going to take apart the tenet. Here we go, cut it out. Okay. Ribbon Cable Adventures, I know, right? Everyone struggles with it. Ribbon Cable Adventures Day 2 don't understand where I can't flip it up. Oh, there we go. Just as soon as I was complaining about it, I was suddenly able to do it. I probably should have just left this in. <laughs> Five hours later, I'm still like, <laughs> oh, oh, I got it, I got it. I got it. I think I got it. It seemed like I got it. Nope, I don't. Never mind. Yeah, if this was a simple JST, I would have been done by now. Oh, the redeemed hide. Ah, okay. Yeah, some stuff to do as you gather channel points. You know, okay, I'm gonna set a time limit on myself. If I still don't have this ribbon cable in in the next 15 minutes, I'm just gonna proceed with the build without the OLED because this is just frustrating. <laughs> Go in. Go in, you damn cable. Go in, I beg you. Yes! We did it! <laughs> oh man. I'm gonna drink something. <laughs> Ah, uh, all right, I'm done, guys. <laughs> okay, where'd I put the rest of the board? Here we go. All right, so we are going to stick with nice PBT keycaps as well. Nice PBT Shinbun. See, it looks very similar to sweater weather. <laughs> yeah, well, uh... Yeah, let's just use this one. All right, everyone, moment of truth. To hear the typing test, come back next week. See you guys. Thanks for joining this. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Just trolling you guys. <laughs> All right, mo moment of truth for reals. All right, so this quick recap, this board has no foams in it. It is using an aluminum plate, um, using the same Gateron KS9s topped with nice PBT Shinbun.
I don't know if it's any better, to be honest. It's different, but I don't know if it's a good kind of different. It's definitely still muted. Even with the aluminum plate, the board is muted. Um, in terms of feel, I think this is, yeah, this is actually good for me. This is the, this is the right amount of stiffness that, that like I was hoping for. So overall, the board is improved. I guess I'm just going, like, in terms of the sound, I'm just going from meh to another kind of meh. Still not where I would want it to be, unfortunately. Not very happy at this point, to be honest with you guys. This might be just one of those boards that looks great and has cool functionality, but in terms of sound, it's not going to be that good. Or at least that's my impression of it right now. Keyboards recommends long pole switches. Let's see. Let's do some testing. So what I have here is the Oolong switches, basically another JWK switch with long, with really long stems. We've got a Texi Ice Candy switches, and then we've got Duroc Palms. We need someone to test tungstens. I have tungstens as well. Not very many anymore, but sure, let's try that all out. Tonight will be the night. Let's figure out how to make this board sound better with just switch choice alone. Switch choice and plate choice, okay? We obviously won't change out every switch on the board, but we'll change out one or two. All right, so once again, Gateron KS9s. I'll lab tungstens. Yeah, that's definitely cutting through the muting, but it's still not, I'm not sure if that's better. I'm not sure if that's a better sound. Okay, next switch. Let's do Duroc Palms. All right, KS9s. Uh, Duroc Palms. Duroc Palms don't impress me either. On to the next switch. Let's try Oolongs. KS9s again. Oolongs. Actually, I like that sound. That's probably the best sound that I've had so so far. That's the best sound. It's the best sound, but I I still don't think the board sounds good. What do I think caused the sound issues? Um maybe the amount of room underneath the PCB, like the way that it's internally designed. Lots of factors can can like play into it. Okay, so I'm gonna put this here. I'll just put it right in front because it's the one that I like. Next up, we'll do Texies. Texie Ice Candies. All right, KS9s. Texie Ice Candies with nylon stem. I like that sound too. Okay, okay. Okay, so, so far the two switches I really like the sound of were the Oolongs and the Texi Ice Candies. Let's see, do I have anything else here? Neopolitans. 
Let's try Neopod. This is probably, probably like my only tactile switch in my collection right now. I've been wondering what, what keyboard to like put this in, so I haven't really used these at all. I don't think I've even lubed these yet. Yep, doesn't sound lubed. Just because I'm not a tactile guy. But here, let's, let's go try it out. Okay. Yeah, I think there's a Neapolitans. So, KS9s. Oh! That... That sounds good. If you can ignore the spring ping... I'm gonna say that that's probably my favorite sound out of the ones I've tried. This one, followed by the oolongs, followed by the, the ice candies. And I feel like this one cuts through the muting of the board the, 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 the best. I am not a tactile person, so in reality, I'll probably not put these in. I don't have any lube tactiles because I don't use tactile switches. I'm not a tactile user. Well, I used to be. Try with ABS caps. ABS caps will actually increase the pitch, so that's not a bad idea. We're just gonna borrow it from the best set that GMK ever created. All right, this is with GMK caps. Sounds better with ABS. Let's try the oolongs. Oolongs with with uh, ABS. That's um Gateron KS nines. Oolongs with the GMK. Okay, yeah. That's much better. Much better with ABS. Much better, but, but, I'm still not absolutely happy with it. It's not enough to win me over, unfortunately. Now, someone earlier mentioned Oil Kings. Let's just try the Oil Kings. KS9s with PBT. I don't like that sound. It, I, it's not a good sound to me. Cracking why it says that's an ew to me. Yeah, I would agree with you on that. Wow, this is probably the first board that I put Gadron Old Kings on that I didn't like how it sounded. Like, sure, there were other boards where I wasn't excited about how it sounded, but this one, I can confidently say I don't like how this sounds. Just so you guys know what I personally think is a good sound, let me just pull out one of my favorite boards and you guys can see why I'm really disappointed with the sound that this guy gives. This one's one of my favorite sounding and feeling boards. This is the Laneware LW67. Extras are going to be showing up in a matter of days, I believe. But yeah, this is running GMK Serica with Gateron KS9s and an aluminum plate, also a gasket mount board. This board sounds great. Another board that I think sounds really great is a customer board I, I just built running nice PBT moon. Knowing how I like both these boards, and then you hear this. Mm. 
you can understand why I don't like this. Also, I guess here's another board that I that I really like. This one's the KD Fans Tiger 80, currently in group buy. Honestly, my feelings about this haven't changed from the rebuild. I My initial take after the first build was that this was a very muted board and then I hoped an aluminum plate would improve the sound and improve the feel. It did improve the feel. This is actually the feel that I like. So definitely an improvement, but the sound still sounds... I, I feel like I went from mediocre to another level of mediocre. It was like a side grade, not really an upgrade and definitely not a downgrade either. A couple things I like about the 10 at 70 is its unique layout. I'm definitely a layout kind of guy. Layout is probably the foremost out of my list of priorities when it comes to picking up a board. So I really like this because I like having a South Polyat with arrow keys over here. The one thing that really bugged me about this board See, did I use foams? I used foams for the original build. This time around, no foams at all because I wanted to cut out as much of the muting as possible. As, as I was saying, um, one of the things I always tell people is it doesn't matter if a board has QMK or not, as long as you can create the key map that you want. Unfortunately for me, this board, I can't use my QMK key map. The particular function that I use QMK for on 60% boards, like this half, is the toggle key. The way I do it is, this is my toggle key right here. I press toggle, these guys become my arrows. I press toggle again, these guys go back to being shift, FN, super, and control. I can't do that with Oban's lab. So I'm like, well, crap, that sucks. Good thing I've got arrow keys here, right? So it's not like I'm completely barred from using arrow keys. Um, I'm also really impressed with the OLED. OLED, at least while the Obens Lab software is up, you can monitor your system temperatures of your CPU, your graphics card, and, and your hard drive. Um, you can also load up a, a custom JPEG of sorts. Like, for example, look what MetaKey sent with me. Let's see if I can find it. Come on. Here, see? Mech Merlin and it even has my hat on it. So re really, really cute there. So you can load this up yourself using the Obens Lab firmware. Yeah, there's like a bunch of stuff that if you are absolutely used to QMK and you really are using QMK specific features, you're gonna miss it on this. So yeah, just, just be aware that key mapping is not as robust. It's not as full featured as QMK. But other than that, I think it's a very unique board. This is made very well, super high QC, super premium boards, but it's got its gotchas. It's, it's got some caveats, I'd say. So just, just remember those things. And like what many people were saying in chat, I would highly recommend using, if, if you're going like the linear route, try going for long pull switches. Um, in today's test, we found that J, the JWK Oolong switches were the best sounding because of their longer pole in terms of linear. In terms of tactile, I really only had one tactile switch here. It was the Ethereal Panda. That one actually sounded the best. Try considering some of those if you guys are looking to really squeeze out the maximum sound that you can from this. Also, go check out Keyboard's video. He shows how, how he modded it using tape mod and a couple others just to make it sound better. Unfortunately, uh, my take on the keyboard video, even with those mods, I agree it sounded better, but it still didn't get the board to where I personally would want a... How much is this? $450 board. Clackbait says $550 with the brass. Overall, still, still, still a good board, but with caveats. Sound profile is just one aspect of the board, right? You know, if you're a person where sound is at the very bottom of your list, then it doesn't really matter, right? But if it's closer to the top, somewhere in the middle, you might be disappointed with this. My next stream will be 
will be this Saturday. We'll be building an Iron 165 round two from a customer using red, red jacket linears. So if that's something you want to see being built and hear my initial thoughts on it, I am an R1 Iron 165 owner, so I'll be comparing the two. But if you're interested in that build, make sure you tune in Saturday, 1.30 p.m. PDT. All right, guys, thanks for joining in. And I will see you when I see you. Goodbye, everyone.